group of conservative leaders is secretly hoping that Donald Trump gets destroyed in this election. According to Politico's playbook, these people are not just the never Trumpers, but actually include people that are free market promoters, pro-life lawmakers who are upset at Trump for, I guess, not being sufficiently anti-woman enough, and pro-NATO defense hawks, which are also basically people that love the military industrial complex. So this isn't really made up of the usual suspects here, but they're like, we do not like Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> now, this was detailed in a new column by political reporter Jonathan Martin, who wrote, quote, the best possible outcome in November for the future of the Republican Party is for Donald Trump to lose and lose soundly. Huh. Now, why does he say that? Well, let's dive in. Now, he wrote that Trump is, quote, incoherent on abortion rights, as I mentioned before, uh, where he, like, uh, comes out and says, for example, in Florida, oh, the, the six-week uh, uh, ban, uh, uh, too short, uh, not enough time. Uh, and then comes out later on and is like, oh, never mind. I, I, I think he's great. <laughs> so uh, I'm not for a national uh, abortion ban and then was for a national. But again, incoherent, right? He just says whatever he thinks is going to, you know, the, the audience there wants to hear. Um, Martin writes, un he's unable to even appear at a cemetery without creating a political mess. By the way, he also lied about that. <laughs> and it's like, this was a setup by Joe Biden uh, and uh, the deep state <laughs> to make me look bad. Never even happened. Oh, my God. Uh, and then he adds, so bothered by those who've suffered the wounds of war that he cites Medal of Honor recipients and running against a female opponent, he is pushing blowjob jokes about her and his last female opponent. So, yeah. Um, basically, it's a, for him, it seems like an image problem. The guy can't keep... Uh, from you know, lying and uh, making himself look horrible, <laughs> of course. Now, here's the thing, though, right? Um, Trump does use populist elements in his messaging, right? Specifically against the elites, because hey, nobody liked the elites, right? Uh, now, he combines that with being super nasty to his opponents, which Republicans love, uh, and then uses the right-wing echo chamber to essentially rewrite reality. Oh, I never did this. Uh, that's fake news, et cetera, et cetera. Trump, though, here's the thing. Trump is the natural progression of the Republican Party's choices over the years, okay? Number one, flooding money into the political system, uh, making it so that, you know, massive mega donors, billionaires, et cetera, um, are the ones that essentially call the shots. Uh, they run the Republican Party, okay? Uh, not only that. Uh, but you also had the, the dark money groups uh, that can put out, you know, super PACs that can essentially put out lies, right? Uh, and that are supposed to not coordinate with campaigns, even though they absolutely coordinate with campaigns. I think even Trump had accidentally admitted to coordinating with one of his PACs. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. And, and, of course, add in that entire e media ecosystem on the right wing that was set up to amplify lies to an electorate that is so invested in their own worldview that they reject factual information. I'd rather receive false information and keep my conservative views than receive true information and follow a socialistic agenda. That right there encapsulates the modern conservative movement. I would rather reject true information so that I can keep being a conservative. And that right there is the problem, okay? That is what the Republican Party created. Donald Trump, he is not the disease. He is a symptom of that disease. He is a cancer that has grown and metastasized due to what conservatives have done to themselves and to this country by large. This is a cause and effect thing. If you create the conditions for someone like Donald Trump to thrive, to emerge, don't be, you know, don't be shocked. Don't make Pikachu face when one of them shows up and takes over. That's what happened. And so suddenly, you know, they, they build all this, you know, stuff to help someone like Donald Trump come about uh, and win. And he did in 2016. Uh, and, then, and then suddenly like, oh, my God, it turns out 
we created this monster and he went around doing monster things. Shock, horror, and people hate it. <laughs> so look, Trump just used all the tools already provided to him in order to take over the party and turn it into a cult of personality. Because that's what it is. I mean, look, conservatives already had an ingrained victimhood complex. They think that, uh, oh my God, the immigrants are taking the country from us. Uh, the feminists are, are destroying men. Uh, the, you know, the, the, all this stuff is, oh, the education is destroying my conservative views, killing religion, oh my God. And then you have, uh, of course, uh, an ingrained, like a literal hatred for the left and liberals, okay? To where everything they do is to own the libs. They can't work together with your neighbors. Can't work together with the, the libs because they hate God and hate you. And, and so I hate them. No, no, no. It, it, that's what they feel, though. Uh, they have a desire for a strongman leader. I've had, uh, you know, I've seen plenty of conservatives be like, well, you know, I, I would like for Donald Trump to be a dictator. You know, if we're going to have a dictator, uh, I, I want it to be Trump. And then, of course, uh, rejection of facts and education. Their constant assault on universities or constant assault on education reality, facts, logic, reason, etc. Now, add to it, by the way, this, this is all supported by the billionaires, right? The billionaires love idiots because idiots are easy to control. And so you put all that together, and there's, and there's plenty of other things that I, I, I didn't mention. I, I would be here all day if I like broke down all the stuff in the conservative movement uh, that is messed up, <laughs> that has led us to now, uh, but you get the you get the overall point, right? You have the toxic stew that is the right wing today as a result of all this stuff. And, and of course, you have the media consolidation uh, by the right wing, by these giant corporations, media corporations, Fox Corporation, et cetera, uh, and, and that, that amplify it. And of course, the left, where is the left? <laughs> there is no leftist power out there to counter any of the right wing. And so add in with that, the intolerable economic conditions for like half the country, um, which is struggling right now. And it makes people susceptible to right-wing narratives on crime and immigration. Okay, the, long story short, to get around to the point for all of this is Republicans, you built that, you built it. So don't be shocked when a fascist comes in and takes advantage of it. Now, Martin concludes, though, by saying, quote, it won't be easy to kick the habit, but the Republican who forges a hybrid coalition, a modern day conservative fusionism between the pre-Trump party and his enthusiasts will be rewarded. No, it can't be anti-Trump, but it must be post-Trump. Moving past Trump in the aftermath of another defeat will hardly be easy, but it's essential if Republicans want to become a viable national party once more. So look, personally, I, 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 I would be happy if uh, Republicans were never a viable party. I'm not saying one party rule or anything like that. No, what I'm saying is the current Republican party is too right-wing, too fascist, right? What we need is, is a return to sensibility <laughs> where you actually do, right now, Republicans have moved the Overton window so far to the right that the Democrats, and by the way, the Democratic Party has been chasing it. Uh, and so the Democratic Party of today is kind of like the Republicans of before, minus the racism. Okay? And let's be honest about that. The Democratic Party, by and large, is very business friendly, tough on crime, pro police, pro military. And it doesn't matter, like, I get a thousand, you know, right when you're shrieking, no, that's not true, fake news. No, you look at the reality of what Democrats have done, they're pro-police. I mean, they fund police, they fund war, uh, they, you know, uh, do very business-friendly policies, again, uh, tax cuts for corporations, etc. And so, and, and look, a lot of their policies also involve enriching, enriching corporations through things like public-private partnerships, where they end up getting massive amounts of government funding to do things. And oftentimes they do it less efficiently because there's that profit motive involved. 
And so their most successful public programs too, and I'm talking about the Democrats here, Medicare and Social Security, they've been handicapped by some of this privatization. Social Security, by the way, doesn't pay out enough to its recipients. Um, now there are Democrats out there trying to call for an increase in social security benefits. It's great, but there's also a cap on how much you're able to earn when you're on social security. There's a cap on how much rich people have to pay into the program to fund it. And that's why there's a, a, a funding shortage that will eventually happen, uh, because the trust fund will run low on money and not be able to pay out full benefits. You can fix that by removing that cap so that rich people will end up paying more. But anyway, you also have that, you have Medicare Part D, which again, it's, it's a private program, uh, and you have Medicare that's not able to negotiate for all prescription drugs. Now, the, the Democratic Party, and, and it is a victory, by the way, but they're touting you know, Biden-Harris administration for being able to negotiate a handful of prescription drugs. Whereas in other countries, the government's like, no, no, no. Um, we're going to negotiate all prescription drugs, not just uh, a few of these, right? We're going to do for all of them because we have a nationalized healthcare system and we're not going to overpay for your drugs. We don't do that here in America. Okay. So now I'm not, I'm not saying that the changes from the Biden administration are bad. No, it is something and it will help people, but man, this could be a lot better if we actually had a left wing Democratic Party if we had left-wing power, but we don't. Uh, now, getting back to this guy, the Republican Party, any post-Trump Republican Party is going to, without major changes, is going to have the same issues as the current Republican Party, all right? They're going to have the same cruel policies that they've always had, but maybe with a kinder face, a different veneer, if you will. They're basically throwing a rug over a, you know, wanting to throw a rug over a rotten wooden floor. Okay. That's what they want to do. And they're, st they're still hoping that somebody falls through it so they can have a laugh because that's what they do. All of their policies. Look, at the end of the day, the party that created Donald Trump is not going to magically be better once Trump is no longer there because the same conditions and the same motivations will remain. The only thing that will be different is that they'll have a new and different cult leader. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you wanna support independent progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shutting down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.